Well, it's all going on here in Australia. We have had quite a bit of protesting, marching going on over the last couple of days and uh, some pretty severe ramifications. Uh, I want to go through a couple of different stories here and we'll finish off with what's happened with the uh, the Liberal, the Victorian Liberal MP. And uh, But I'm going to go to an article that, um, well, uh, to a to a news outlet, uh, let's say, put it that way, an outlet that I wouldn't normally read a lot of, but this is the Star Observer. So I believe they are like a, an LGBTQ kind of pro publication, whatever. Okay, so, but I wanted to see what is going on, get a couple of different sides, how different people are looking at this. Uh, this headline here, which I'll read for you, and I'll um, actually, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll be able to follow along. You'll be able to uh, see what I'm looking at here. Uh, interesting, the take on this. Um, the headline says, Melbourne activists to, prote to protest British anti-trans activist Kelly J. Keane this Saturday. So that was last Saturday. Uh, so visiting a UK anti-trans activist, uh, this Kelly J. Keane Australia wide tour has been met with protests so far at her stops in Perth, Brisbane, and Sydney. Uh, this weekend, which was Saturday just gone, is at Melbourne's, it's Melbourne's turn with LGBTQI activists and allies planning protests on Saturday, March 18, 2023. So Keane, who goes by the online handle, the Posy or Posse, Posy Parker. Uh, will be in Melbourne this weekend for her Let Women Speak Australia tour. Isn't it strange how things have changed? If a men's group ever, ever tried to protest a women's group, especially one called Let Women Speak, there would be hell to pay. And I'm not trying to mock the ladies' groups that are trying to speak. I think it's pretty disgusting what these uh, what these groups are doing, trying to shut down free speech. It's just uh, it's just strange the way things have gone. Anyway, so she's on this speech, this uh, tour, Let Women Speak tour, uh, which is backed by CPAC, which is the Conservative Political Action Conference and Binary Australia. Never heard of either of those groups. So obviously the anti-trans activists, their group here, they're going to try and uh, bring everything together. Anyway, so Keen, according to the National Union of Students Queer, the L, which is I think an LGBT, which is organising one of the protests, is one of the most recognisable and active anti-trans activists in the UK. Okay, so Keen is on a mission to build links between the far right. It's interesting who they describe as far right, okay? Far right and anti trans feminist activists. The far right is using transphobia, which isn't a real thing, by the way, because let's look at the literal meaning. You can't just put phobia, uh, you know, a word in front of a term in front of the word phobia. It doesn't make sense. You can't. Who, who is really fearful of transgender people? You're not really. You just don't agree with it. It doesn't mean you're fearful in any way. Uh, anyway, transphobia to build support and activists like Keen aim to aim to link up the far right with anti-trans feminist groups, according to the group, which will protest along with campaign against fascism and racism. If you don't agree with transgender ideology, you are fascist and racist. You are obviously you must be part of that because racism has a lot to do with transgenderism. Uh, don't get that anyway so this is going to be held at the carlton garden saturday we're turning out to oppose keen because we stand for the left which is social justice workers rights anti-sexism workers rights okay anti-sexism anti-transphobia anti-homophobia and anti-racism uh, we won't let people like Keane pit women against trans people. We won't let far-right groups masquerade as supporters of women. This is what Grace, LGBTI officer, posted on Facebook. Another group, Trans Queer Solidarity, is also planning a protest against Parliament steps in Melbourne on March 18. Uh, TQS is protesting both Keane as well as anti-vaxxer conspiracy theorists 
who have targeted queer and tra trans children. Very strange. So Keen kicked off a tour in Sydney on March 11 and was met with protests from, you know, from all these people. On a second stop in Brisbane on March 12, Keen supporters were outnumbered by trans activists and anti-fascists, according to the National Union of Students Queer LGBTI. On March 14, uh, Keen supporters were reportedly drowned out by LGBTQ rainbow people. Around 150 activists shouted, Posey Parker, you can't hide, you have Nazis on your side. English singer-songwriter and activist Billy Bragg, who was in Adelaide when Keane was, vis was visiting, gave a shout-out to the protests against her. Who really cares what Billy Bragg says? Anyway, well, I'm talking about this here. So it was very interesting the way these people, what this uh, organisation classifies as far right. Okay, so it's got here a link into Binary uh, Australia Classified, as far-right extremist group. And when you look up who they've decided is now a far-right now a far right group. So I want to jump over to this article from the same publication, the Star Observer. Uh, and this was a link from, from one of their other pages. So this is who is now being classified as far-right extremist groups, Australian Christian Lobby. I knew this was coming. Didn't realise it was actually already here with some of them. Uh, so Australian Christian Lobby, LGB Alliance, never heard of them. One Nation, uh, which is a political party here in Australia. Uh, they've been listed as hate and extremist groups. This is the report. So this is again written by the Shibu Thomas. So Pauline Hansen's One Nation, the anti-trans group LGB Alliance and Binary Australia, and the anti-LGBTQI Australian Christian Lobby are among the 20-odd organisations identified as far-right and extremist groups by the Global Project Against Hate and Extremism, otherwise known as GPAHE. Okay, so GPAHE is a US-based anti-violence group think tank that was founded by veterans of the Southern Poverty Law Center, a prominent civil rights organization in America. Uh, this is the group's first such report that profiles far-right groups in Australia and second in a series of country reports after a similar report in Ireland was released in August 2022. So according to the uh, GPAHE, majority of the groups listed in its Australia report are white nationalist, anti-immigrant or anti-Muslim, but anti-LGBTQ, uh, anti-transgender, anti-Semitic, uh, Semitic, anti-women and groups pushing conspiracy theories also made the list. Anyone pushing a conspiracy theory like what's that what's that latest conspiracy um that the plan to have a demic put it that way um it was actually leaked out of a uh, laboratory and didn't come from a a fish market how about that for a uh, conspiracy theory that obviously has never been proven uh, anyway so the report terms the ACL Australia's most well-known anti-LGBTQ plus group with stated positions against same-sex marriage, gay adoption, safe schools, LGBTQI reforms, and recently trans rights. So I'll just stop right there. The whole reason why, okay, the ACL, the Australian Christian Lobby, has stated positions against same-sex marriage and all that stuff is because... That's what the Bible says. So I think I've said this before in another podcast, okay? If if you don't agree with what the Bible says, what the Bible teaches, your, your problem really isn't with the Australian Christian lobby or whatever religious group. Your, your problem is with God, and that's that's the issue. So you've probably got bigger problems if you don't, as a Christian, if you don't believe that... Uh, in salvation, if you don't believe that the Bible teaches, the Bible shows us the way, if you don't believe in God at all, um, you, you know, you, you really have to overcome that hurdle. 
because if you don't believe in the Bible and you don't believe in God, what does it matter to you what the Bible teaches or what these groups like the Australian Christian Lobby teach? Okay, I think personally, I think you're going to have a bigger problem in the long run. But if that is your real issue, what they are teaching, what they are, what they believe in, your issue is with the God of the Bible, the Lord Jesus Christ, the creator of the heavens and the earth. That is where your issue really is. That's who your issue is really with. So you're going to have to take it up with God. eh? Uh, anyway, so according to the GPAHE and UK-based anti-trans groups, uh, blah, blah, blah. LGB Alliance Australia chapter has supported Jessica Hoyle's case seeking exemption under Tasmania's anti-discrimination laws to, to hold some single-sex event, events that would ban trans women. So further down, it says, further down, it says, there has been a reluctance in Australia to label anti-LGBTIQA plus and anti-trans groups like the Australian Christian Lobby, Binary and the LGB Alliance as hate or extremist groups, despite that label being apply applied to racist and white supremacist groups, Croom has told the Star Observer. Okay, so getting over all that, basically... Christians are now being labelled as bigots, which has been going on for quite a while. But there's this movement, and I believe it's I believe it's going to push in, and they're in the in the long run they're going to push in and want the Bible to be uh, to be labelled as hate speech. That's what I think will happen in the long run, and I I believe that there will be a push to actually ban the Bible. Uh, but all this. The reason why I'm talking about all this today, it has led to what's happened uh, over the weekend with this march that occurred in in Melbourne. So a Liberal MP by the name of Moira Deeming, I believe her name is, you know, I'll bring it up for you, a Victorian Liberal MP set for expulsion over anti-trans rally. So an outspoken Vic, uh, Victorian Liberal MP is set to be expelled from the Parliamentary Party over her involvement in an anti-transgender rally attended by neo-Nazis. Now, at no point in any reports I've ever seen anyone say that she supported these neo-Nazis that arrived. Um, interesting that the police were able to prevent the, the pro-trans activist protesters from stopping or from attending this uh this this rally that was going on however they weren't able to stop these neo-nazis it seems a little strange okay we can stop them but we can't stop this other group and and then we allowed them to go on and behave in a very uh unsociable unsociable way and now she is paying the price for this. So going on, it says Moira Deeming spoke at the Let Women Speak. A little bit of irony here. She's speaking at the Let Women Speak event, which is held by British anti-trans activist Kelly J. Keane Marshall uh, Munshall, okay, outside Victorian Parliament on Saturday. So she's outside in front of her own workplace, respectively, you know practically. Uh, so a group of neo-Nazis joined the anti-trans demonstrators and repeatedly re performed the Nazi salute, sparking violent clashes as police kept counter-protesters at bay. Opposition leader John Pesuto, he said he met Ms. Deeming on Sunday afternoon and discussed her involvement in organising, promoting and participating in a rally that had speakers and others publicly linked with far right wing extremist groups. Remember that far right wing extremist groups includes the Australian Christian lobby. Who, as far as I know, and if you look up, if you check out Martin Isles, who was like the head of that group, just a very Bible based teaching. That's all Bible based organization. Uh, so apparently these far-right extremist groups, including neo-Nazi activists. Now, no one, no one's supporting these neo-Nazis. Anyway, so Mr. P 
Pesuto confirmed he would move a motion at the next party room meeting to expel her as a member of the parliamentary Liberal Party, declaring her position untenable. Remember, all she actually did was speak at a at a rally called Let Women Speak. How dare she speak at a rally where they're fighting for women's rights to speak? Anyway, uh, says this is not an issue about free speech, but a member of the parliamentary party associating with people whose views are abhorrent to my values, the values of the Liberal Party and the wider community, Mr. Pesuto said in a statement. So the Liberal Party I joined, this is what he's saying, and which I am now honoured to lead, must strive to represent all Victorians, regardless of of religious faith, except for probably if you're a Christian in the long run, that's what it'll end up being. Race, sexual preference, and identity. This whole Victorians everywhere should know that the Liberal Party is inclusive and can be a voice for them. No matter what our background, we all share the abiding bond of an essential humanity. Uh, Pursuit labelled the scenes of black clad white supremacists marching along Spring Street, an abomination and affront to values all Victorians should hold dear. And look, definitely agree to it. This Australia has got no place for neo-Nazis. So the violence, prejudice and hate that these protesters conveyed by their odious actions will never be acceptable in our state, he said. I condemn them and commit to opposing such hate wherever it may exist. So in a post on social media, Ms. Deeming said she was disappointed with Victoria Police for letting masked men into the rally buffer zone, terrifying women who were just trying to speak about their rights. She says police managed to stop hordes of trans right activists, trans rights activists, but somehow Somehow they could only walk masked men past us as they did a horrible, nasty salute. You, you do have to wonder what the Victorian police are doing when they can stop all those, the trans activists, but they can't stop neo-Nazis. You can't stop those followers from, you know, and they walk them past the women, really. And then, and anyway, I'll go on. The former teacher and city of Melton Councillor was elected to the Victorian Parliament last year as a member for Western Metropolitan Region, replacing controversial MP Bernie Finn after he was expelled from the party over his abortion views. Now, remember, his abortion views were abortions were wrong. He actually put out a few tweets when... Uh, when America, the United States, overturned Roe v. Wade. He put out a few tweets saying, basically, well done. He supported the view. He supports uh, the he supports the um, not having abortions. He is anti, anti-abortions. So, obviously, they lost. Uh, he doesn't smell good anymore. He doesn't belong in the party. They got rid of him. He was expelled. Now they have a woman who's at a pro-women's speech rally. She is no good either because, well, apparently it's her fault that neo-Nazis rocked up, um, did that stupid salute. Uh, police, for some reason, aren't able to stop them from going past, from interrupting the rally, doing the salute. Police can't, they can't do any of that. So obviously it's it's her fault and now she is going to pay the price because a bunch of buffoons got there and the other buffoons who were dressed as Victorian police couldn't stop them from marching and doing their stupid salute. So now she pays the price for speaking at a rally called Let Women Speak. And this is the way Australia is going. And obviously the Australian Christian lobby, they are the far right and pretty soon, the Bible will be labelled as hate speech. That's where we're going, folks. That's my opinion. Very messed up. Thank you for listening to The Slippery Slope.